Hello interwebs, beautiful people and RAM fans anywhere. Before we start this episode of Ramify, I'm gonna ask you guys to do me a huge favor. If you could please hit the subscribe button to our beautiful VC Sports channel. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up before basketball season. You kinda need to get informed. Thanks. On episode number three or three of Ramified, we'll be taking a look, of course, at VCU men's soccer, women's soccer, field hockey, and volleyball as usual. We'll also give some love to our Ram of the show, and we'll have a special basketball rant for you men's basketball fans. So stay tuned. You're going to want to watch this. This episode of Ramified is brought to you by our good friends at Creative Dog Media, Drink Virginia Beer, and Team United Real Estate RVA. Let's do this! Let's kick things off, literally, with VCU Women's Soccer. VCU Women's Soccer started off a 10 play against Davidson, where they defeated the Wildcats 2-1. And then things kind of debunkled against Duquesne, where the Rams literally melted down in the second half and lost that game 3-1. A beautiful first half of football against Duquesne ended up being a complete disaster by the end of the game with three conceded goals off of some terrible defending, miscommunication, and basically leaving Audrey Sanderson in goal with the odds totally against her. In order for a championship to win the title, they had to go through some adversity, and the adversity is pointing right at their midfield and defense. Yes, they still have strikers. Yes, the midfield is still talented to move the ball towards the strikers. However, the midfield defending and the defensive line and the communication between keeper and defending still looks to be an issue. However, the VCU Rams are still in the middle of the table in the A-10, so there is a little bit of hope, especially with the next couple of games against some middle of the table opponents. Can the women's soccer fix these issues as the A-10 season kinda starts igniting right at the moment? Hopefully, especially if they truly wanna win that A-10 championship at the end of the season. Oh, how men's soccer has improved the last couple of weeks. Now, looking at their results, they did get two draws, but they're two impressive draws on the road at St. Louis, which doesn't really count as an A-10 game. Shocking. And at number 23, Akron at Club Cadet Field, which is a huge achievement. They also started A-10 play against George Mason at home at Sportsbackers and dethroned the Patriots 2-0. Right now, looking at the A-10 pitcher, the Rams are currently in a Four-way tie for first place with St. Joe's, St. Louis, and Rhode Island. All four teams with three points. And the Rams are peaking at the right time, including hashtag the Luke Fatone show after that three-goal blistering sensation of a hat trick during the ODU match. The Rams are starting to peak at great form at both sides of the field, including Pierre Gardin, who was recently named the A-10 Defensive Player of the Week. So... Can this continue? That is always the question for VCU men's soccer. After chit-chatting with VCU head coach Dave Gifford and watching the latest couple of matches, VCU men's soccer are in a very good spot right now. Uh, we've been pretty dominant and pretty consistent in terms of, uh, you know, not losing very many. But, and we've you know, been pretty lopsided most of the game in terms of uh, chances created, you know, shots, corners, those types of things. Um, but at the end of the day, none of that matters. Uh, there's a lot of ways to play the game, and uh, you know we've got our way. We believe in it, but uh, when we get into the conference, you know everybody comes to a clean slate. Everybody's fighting again. Everybody feels good, and uh, teams could care less if we have 700, 800 passes. Uh, the only thing that matters is the the numbers on the scoreboard. Their composure is there. Their shots are now landing into the goal instead of going wide or going too high. Their defense is staying composed, especially during counterattacks and against heavy assault on offense. They just need to check their emotions a little bit and actually focus on the game for 90 minutes instead of maybe 70 or 65 or 45 or 42.37. You know what I mean. Oh, it's so hard for VCU field hockey at the moment. With four consecutive defeats for VCU field hockey, and I mean really close ones at the hands of Lock Haven, JMU in overtime, and two A-10 defeats, it's really, really hard for VCU field hockey. And at the moment, it's not going to get any easier. 
I usually don't like many things like this, but in this case, I have to. It is a make or break time for VCU field hockey. After just recently taking on top seed at St. Joe's in a losing effort, they now have to focus on UMass, who is second currently in the A-10. And then after a few other tough non-conference games, they then have to focus on St. Francis PA, who was also on the top of the table of the A-10. So, tough opponent after tough opponent, the Rams have to master up some humongous upsets to keep their season afloat in the A-10. Their offense is starting to come together a little bit, and defensively, especially their goalie, very productive on the defensive end. They just had some heartbreaking losses and defeats, so if they're able to muster up that and bring out the positivity and bring the skills to back it up, who knows, they could probably land an upset or two. Next up, VCU Volleyball. The Rams were involved in three road matches since we last spoke. Uh, VCU defeated Maryland Eastern Shore 3-1. to one. Then they went over to Duquesne and lost 1-3, to three, but quickly switched it up and defeated LaSalle 3-0 for their eighth sweep of the season. Looking at the A-10 standings, VCU Volleyball are currently 2-1 and one and sit at the middle of the table. You have Rebecca Strange, who has had her dig total go down just a little bit, single digits compared to her 20, 18, 19, and 13 dig totals. But yet, you still have many VC volleyball players stepping up their game, such as Alicia Candler, who led the team in kills and digs against LaSalle. You also have freshmen like Medallia Simpson stepping up to the plate, and you also have players like Tori Baldwin, and yeah, this, these girls are still a very good team to watch. Kind of could be the dark horse of VCU fall sports this year. Let's be honest, no one really thought that VCU volleyball could possibly be winning an A-10 championship this year. They're good, don't get me wrong, VCU volleyball, because you guys can kill and spike people. Just don't hit me while I'm recovering you guys. At the same time, VCU volleyball could be the huge upset of the year. These girls are really good. They have a chance to win the A-10 championship as long as they keep going with the production, the digs, and the kills, obviously. Side note, they also have a lot of home games left. Tickets are cheap, and we all know that you know where the Seagull Center is. Come out, show your support, wear some black and gold, cheer loudly with the Rowdy Rams and the Pep Band, and, you know, give the girls some love. They deserve it. They need you. Now, go. Speaking of fandom, we also have to give credit where credit is due to our lovable spirit group known as the DC Rowdy Rams and also the Pebbles, also known as DC Athletic Band. They have brought their A game way before basketball season at volleyball, field hockey, and men's and women's soccer at Sportsbackers. It has been loud, it has been rambunctious. Keep it up guys and girls, you're, you're doing us a great service. It's time to give some Ram love. It's Ram of the show time. And our show honor goes to VCU men's soccer, Luke Fatone for his incredible offensive work, especially against Old Dominion, because when you score three goals against your bitter rival, yeah, you get props, major props. Mr. Luke Fatone coming out of Charlottesville has been a tremendous service to VCU men's soccer this year. He had a little bit of an early struggle at the start of the season, but now he has flourished, especially against Old Dominion with three goals, as I mentioned earlier. I think I mentioned that earlier, didn't I? From there, he has scored another additional goal here in A-10 play against LaSalle, and now leads the team with four goals on the season. Mr. Luke Patone has also been a one-man show with fancy footwork, impressive crosses, and of course, shots on target that make me say, oh my goodness. From there though, Luke Patone still has a lot of work to do, and he has proven that he is willing to do the work necessary to grab all three points on any given day or night at Sportsbackers. So Mr. Luke Patone, keep up the good work as we claim you are Ram of the Show here at Ramified episode number three. It's the VCUSports.com VCU Men's Basketball Super Early Preseason Look Ahead Preview Special Event Black and Gold Spectacular 2016. Yeah, I feel good. I got my t-shirt, I got my jersey. Yeah. We're counting down the days here until the black and gold game at Siegel Center in the next couple of weeks. So here's a little look-see preview, call it what you will, of VCU Men's Basketball. Before we move forward, we do have to take a few steps back to look at what happened during the offseason. Do not worry, Coach Wade is still with us, so we don't have to worry about a head coaching change about that. 
we do have to look at who left player-wise. VCU's Melvin Johnson, aka our 3 4 King, aka 3 Point All Time Leader, has left due to graduation. Corey Bilberry, our beloved head man and one year rock solid player, also left due to graduation. We also saw a couple transfers and Michael Gilmore leaving for University of Miami. Jonathan Nwanko also transferring. Jerome Sism going to JMU and our welcome Jordan Rulliano also leaving the building. While we're on the topic of the last season, let's take a look at some numbers. Last season, the Rams racked up 309 steals. In comparison to 2014, where the Rams racked up 342. And if you take another look in 2013, they racked up 391. So with the modifications to Havoc, such as zone defense, and a little less man to man, the steals of Havoc has gone down. Going up, which might raise a couple of eyebrows, is turnovers. In comparison, in 2014, where the Rams had 383, last season that number increased to 414. Now, that might raise an eyebrow, make you want to hit the panic button a little bit as turnovers on the rise, steals are low. What else is going on? Well, if you look at it, everything else seems to be going in a positive direction. Scoring is up, both from inside and in paint to mid-range to beyond three-point line. Also, assists is on the rise, rebounding both offensively and defenses increase. Now, I know all these stats are getting you all ready and flam-foozled and ready and stuff. <laughs> now, I know while you are listening to me, you are visualizing the Seagull Center with over 8,000 people, the band flowing, playing that Peppa effect, all of us yelling in unison, let's go VCU. But slow your roll a little bit because there are a few questions though. If you look at the roster, there's only four big men. Five of you count Jordan Burgess as a guard slash forward. So one interesting question that's coming into mind is stamina because you have a lot of guard play, which means your forwards have to keep up with your guards. Now we know Mo Ali Cox is a beast of a man. And you know the fro, AKA Justin Tillman tremendous speed and power but it is going to come a time where they're going to have to keep up with guard play in a very ferocious game and you're going to have to kind of wonder with only a few subs at that forward position could that be a factor in a in a winning or losing game will wade has done it again with the recruits this year including isaac van who was the main transfer that everybody googled and got out over twitter and facebook and also a very interesting and talented freshman class, including Malik Crawford, Marco Frazier, Darianti Jenkins, and the Russian walk-on Alex, and I'm probably gonna mess up his last name, Yaroshinsky. Another interesting tidbit, Melvin Johnson and Corey Bilberry. They were two of the top four scorers in VCU last season. Can you guess the other two? That would be Jaquan and Mo, two seniors. And you don't really have a senior leader, consider you have about six seniors on the team, which is a really big class for the VCU at this point. So, from last year, all eyes are on Jaquan, and if you think, Jaquan, that the eyes aren't on you this time, you are sadly mistaken. As the probably self-picked senior leader, Jaquan is in the spotlight with his assisting, is able to motivate teammates, so he has the ability to do it, and he knows he's gonna put the pressure on himself to deliver every single night, whether it's assisting, three-pointing, or whatever he has to do, because that's just what Jaquan does. He is a great team player. But can he do it consistently as a senior leader? Many other players have stepped up to senior level and delivered. We're hoping that he can do that again for us. The inside the paint hammering combo of Mo and Fro, AKA Mo Ali Cox and Justin Tillman is gonna be a sight to see this season. Justin Tillman has gone off during the offseason with training as his vertical has almost hit the top of the backboard. Also, Mo has packed on some more muscle. Yes, I know that's hard to believe, but it's true. Just wait till the black and gold game and watch. So those two are going to be a huge focus for teams because you got that inside game. They got to get rebounds. They got to get dunks. They got to get blocks for all of us to go ooh, ooh, ah, or over. So in this super preview, black gold spectacular early super gobber flipper flapper of a preview, VCU in the A-10 championship. Can it be claimed by the black and gold? Yes. Well, guys, that'll do it for this third episode of Ramified. I know we've been three in a row. That's a hat trick. 
For more information, including our game recasts, photo galleries, and any other videos of black and gold goodness that we created here, head over to VCUsports.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at VCU Sports. Give us a like on Facebook at slash VCU Sports. And also check out our Instagram at VCU Sports RVA. Until next time, my name is Kazi. Love your faces. Let's go VCU. And as always, go Rams. Rams.